Hey guys, what in the world is going on? It seems everywhere you're hearing, uh, people has an identity crisis going on. You have uh, women believing that they're men, men believing they're women. Uh, just heard uh, on the radio that uh, this I think he's 50 something year old guy he's uh he believes he's a six year old um identity crisis everywhere people have no clue who they truly are you see but that's been a problem for thousands of years actually since uh, the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve sinned against Satan, uh, against God, they actually took upon the identity of the enemy, Satan. They took his identity. See, God created man in his own image. After the image of God created he him. Him. But they obeyed the voice of the enemy, taking upon his nature instead of obeying the voice of God and keeping his nature, you see, his identity. So for thousands of years, man was walking in a different identity than they were created for until Jesus Christ. And what happens with Jesus Christ, those that believe and trust in the work that He has done for them on the cross, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God's Son coming in that believer, crying out, Abba, Father, brings them back into the true identity of who they really are you see so I think that's why you having all these identity crises everywhere it's it's like wildfire right now uh, because well, first off because the enemy the devil knows that his time is short and he's going berserk okay and so all of this, these people who are out of the faith or not in the faith of Christ, that the nature of Satan is being manifested like never before. It's uh, crazy to me that people are identifying themselves according to their lifestyles. So, for instance, uh, a person who is living in a perverted sexual sin, you know, identifies themselves as a, a homosexual. I, I mean, wh when did we begin to start to identify people according to their sexual lifestyle? You know, it used to be identifying people according to their race, which I don't even think that is correct. I believe God wants to bring us back into identifying us as the children of God. When man lives for self, when men live for self, okay, then they're going to identify themselves for that self. We were not created to live for self. We were created to glorify God. See, Jesus Christ shows us the, the greatest example of a son of God and the lifestyle that he lived. And the lifestyle he lived was laying down his life for his friends and for others. Jesus walked in the perfection of a son of God. He walked in the perfection of love. God is love. He created men 
to be in that state of love, in that nature of love. Love is not selfish. Love is not self-identifying one as something that is different than someone else. You see, we are all one. And that's how God created us to be. And that's how He's trying to bring us back into that one identification as a child of God. It's not, I mean, it, it's so easy to understand. And yet people will call this sacrilege. If you can truly understand your true identity, that's the only time you will be fulfilled in your life. And your true identity has nothing to do with your life in this world and how other men see you or how other men identify you. Your true identity is who you know who you are in God, in Christ Jesus. You see, the confidence that we have towards God and in prayer and knowing God and He knowing us is not our identity in this world, but it is our identity in Christ Jesus and He alone and knowing what He did for us upon that cross 2,000 years ago. The cross which is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation from what? Salvation from the snare of the devil kidnapping us from the beginning of our life, giving us His identity, you see. When we're free, in Christ Jesus, then we truly, really, truly can come to God with full confidence that we are His and that we belong to Him. Men like the Apostle Paul had power over the work of the devil. What did Satan say? Satan said, Jesus I know and this Apostle Paul I know. You see, he was meaning that he knew that their identity of themselves, they had the full assurance turn left on East Avenue, that they were right. sons of God. Don't you know that your revelation of sonship Okay, your revelation of being in Christ, what He did in making you a son, has made your residence in the kingdom of God, part of the kingdom of God, that you're living in the realm of God Himself, that He is in you. Do you know and understand, do you have that revelation of a son being identified as of a son of God? That you have the power to bring forth the will of God in this world? You see, Satan is there to kill, steal, and destroy. Okay, and he's trying to stop the will of God in each person's life by killing, destroying, stealing. The, the faith of people in believing their true identity. But you being a light in this world, okay? A light of God, a revelation. You are a revelation of truth. You have that power as, a, uh, as being identified as a son of God to go forth and to bring forth the will of God in this world. The preordained will of God that He preordained before the foundations of the world. That's what Jesus Christ did. Jesus went around to, okay, to sick people, making them well because that is the will of God. There was a storm coming up about to, this, uh, the, the disciples thought that they was going to, that this storm was going to kill them, destroy their ship and 
and and swallow them up in, into this ocean or this in, into the sea. And Jesus Christ rebuked the storm. He brought forth the will of God on that day. You see, where the enemy was trying to do his work. Jesus Christ came and destroyed the work of the enemy and brought forth the will and the purpose and the, pr the preordained purpose of God that day. And your 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 purpose, your your work is to do no less than that as a son of God. Do you know that The only way you truly can worship God and praise God and pray to God is when you have the revelation of your true identity as a son of God. The Word of God says that, uh, that we must pray in spirit and in truth. What does that mean? Some people think it's uh, praying in tongues. That, that's not what it's talking about. He's talking about praying in the Spirit of God's Son within you, crying out, Abba, Father. The Spirit within you crying out, Abba, Father, giving you the, the revelation that you are His and that you were created out of Him, for Him, for His purpose, for His glory. You see? So, when you're going to identify it, when you're going to understand that He identified you as a son, then truly you can come with full confidence in prayer and praise and worship in the spirit of a son. Then, and only then, will you have the confidence. Your identification derived from above, not beneath, you see. You must live as if you're living from above and not below. Uh, it, we may be in this world, but we're not of this world. We're just pilgrims passing through, you see. Many people, especially in this country, they believe that Jesus died on the cross so that they can have this American dream and and that's not why he took the cross he took the cross and the work of the cross and was and suffered and died so that you could be reconciled back unto your father and and regain this this identity in which he created you to be from the very beginning you see that's the reason.